jack it up. Hurts keeps, Hurts cuts, Hurts has the first down, and Jalen Hurts might have just put it away for the Eagles. Touchdown. Tyrese Betsy and the Sixers are going to win this game. Joel Tuck turned around in the lane. Another 30 and 10 performance for Joel Embiid. Hurts connects with Devontae Smith. Welcome back to Two and Five Scoop. Um, it's been a week, but we're on a different sub- subject right now. Obviously, last night NFL season kicked off with the Rams against the Bills. Really, really interesting game. I guess it was sloppy, kind of on um, both ends in the first half. But then we all saw Bills kind of took over and dominated the Rams in that second half. At, what are your thoughts on the game last night? Yeah, I mean, it was it was as expected. The this first. Thursday night like kickoff games are always pretty sloppy. And we saw oh, like five turnovers in the first half. Yeah, about. Very sloppy game. Uh, then the, the Bills just turned it around in that second half, and the, the Rams were still just kind of treading water. And not, they were drowning. <laughs> well, yeah, they were drowning. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of concerns on that Rams offense. Like, I don't know. It, things just seem very off. Um I could it could be just me being salty because I'm a Cam Akers fantasy owner, um, and bro put up like he had two touches for zero yards, and I started him as my RB two. So uh, <laughs> I gotta figure out that. But uh, outside of that, I mean the offensive line seems like an issue. I mean the Bills sacked Matt Stafford seven times last night. They mm. let a washed Von Miller dominate them. That, that Rams offensive line let Von Miller, I'm not going to downplay how good he is, but I don't think he's, he's, he's in his prime anymore. No. That Rams offensive line looks really shaky. I don't know if it was just like the first game jitters. I don't know if it's a Super Bowl hangover. I don't know. It, it was like a tale of two stories with this game. You got one team who's like Super Bowl favorites, and then you got the Rams who are Super Bowl hangover. You know? Yeah, that, I mean, that's definitely what it seems like. I guess the question, I mean, the Bills are getting a lot of Super Bowl hype this year. Definitely. I mean, I think they're by far the favorite to win. It really just feels like their year. Mm -hmm. Are the Bills that good or are the Rams, you know, coming down from that from that Super Bowl high? Yeah. I mean, at the same time, they were also playing in L.A. And we all know how playing in L.A. works. The other team's fans kind of just take over because the L.A. fan base is just non-existent. It it isn't. It's, It's just not there. But um I was watching the game last night, and I just saw so much blue, so much red. I didn't see much gold and gold and blue. It was all blue and red. So it was just unfortunate for the Rams, but at the same time, they played very, very sloppily, and I don't think they deserved the win to begin with. But um, so, I think – I don't know about you. I feel like the level of concern after this game for Los Angeles <laughs> isn't very high still. Allen Robinson only saw two targets. Cam, you know, Cam Akers, as you know – only got three touches, so there's a lot of there's a lot of little tweaks to be made, and I think getting those guys more touches and more targets improves that offense pretty significantly. Well, well on that, that, and you have to take take into account um, that Allen Robinson and Cam Akers last year. I mean, Cam Akers obviously was out for the year, but Allen Robinson was just a disappointment. I think he's on his downside of his career for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the really it's a it's like they miss this player a lot, which is Odell Beckham Jr. You, you saw Cooper Cup. Well, yeah, he still had a big night, which is, I mean, he had, he was doubled all night. With OBJ in the mix, that opens things up for Cooper Cup. And I feel like that made him a lot more dominant last year. And I think with him having the stat line that he had last night, just goes to show how good he is. But my point being, they're still missing OBJ. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's a very, really big piece that, you know, that was there last year and for, for half the year. Um, it was key to the Super Bowl run, and he's not there anymore. So I think that's something that needs to be worked out. They need to get some kind of good slot receiver, maybe bring him back because he's still out in the market and everything. Um, but, yeah, there's just a lot of things that L.A. has to figure out, but I don't think it's quite, you know, I don't, I don't think it's panic time quite yet. No, no. My my prediction for them, I, I feel still pretty confident in that. I, in my opinion, I think Buffalo is just that good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. I think this game is definitely showing 
more Buffalo being good than the Rams being bad. Um, people were having some hot takes and saying the Rams aren't even going to finish above 500. I think that's way too hot to be comfortable. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Plus, last year we saw the Packers, the uh, number one seed in the NFC last year. Last year we saw the Packers in week one get blown out like 38-3 to three by the Saints. So, I, I mean, I – I don't think a first game being blown out by three scores or more is like that big of a deal, but at the same time, it shouldn't have happened in the first. I don't know. Well, well, now, well you, you remember a couple a couple of years ago too, the first game of the season, New England plays Kansas City and just yeah. gets absolutely blown out. Kareem Hunt ran for like three touchdowns, yep. and everyone's saying, "Oh, yeah. the New England dynasty is over." I think they won the Super Bowl that year. So they did. They did. It's it's yeah. not unusual. It it's more you expected for teams to be very sloppy that first game i think buffalo was more the outlier than the rams just being bad i think you know that, that first game you expect those jitters yeah those, miscommunications, those bad throws by the quarterback you know yeah i mean really just came to preparation for the game and obviously the bills were much more prepared but in other news um the whole reason why we're here is the eagles are playing on sunday um we're facing so, the lions we're in detroit one o'clock on fox uh, I don't I'm just excited. I'm tired of waiting. We've been talking about this for weeks now, uh, about like, oh, how's Jalen going to play? How's the offense going to look? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm satiated a little bit by that, uh, getting to watch some football that, like, where the record, the mm-hmm. score actually counts. But, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm not satisfied until I get to see some Eagles green on the field. Asher, I believe you had the injury report for this week. And then we had some questions with, um, uh, Jason Kelsey. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the one everything everyone's most concerned about. Uh, all uh, all reports look like Kelsey's going to play. So, I mean, I re- really we wouldn't have been that worried about it either way with the way Cam Jurgens was playing in preseason, and at, like the Lions' defensive line isn't that imposing. But mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, it's always great to have that that presence on the offensive line, that leadership. Yeah. Um... Why don't we just take a moment to go back to last year when we played the Lions? And that was kind of the turning point of the season mm-hmm. when we decided to go from making Jalen Hurts pass for 35, 40 times a game, mm-hmm. maybe even more, to kind of leaning on that run offense. And the difference now is is that we have different running backs. You know, we didn't have Miles Sanders last year. He's gonna be he's gonna be in the mix. We have some players that we were missing for that game last year where he posted 40, 40 plus on them that we're getting back. Plus we have AJ Brown. Plus we have that, you know, that defense that we really stocked up on, especially you know in the linebacker and the in the in the secondary. It, it's it's going to be a different story. Do you think it's going to be further a blowout, or do you think it's going to be closer? And we're going to come out with like kind of like the early season shakes. Yeah. No, I think I feel like I don't know how different we are from other teams, but. I mean, obviously, I mainly pay attention to the Eagles. I feel like we always have shaky week one starts. I remember uh, a couple of years ago against the the Jaguars where we went down like 17-0. That and was like Jaguars. 2015. That was yeah, like, they were like the worst team in the NFL. Yep. Yeah, not many pieces in place, but I'm feeling like a similar vibe to this game. We're in Detroit. I think we're going to come in maybe a little too overconfident, maybe overlooking this game, looking into that Minnesota yeah. game. Detroit's going to make us wake up a little bit. They might go into mm-hmm. halftime leading, and then we're just going to put them yeah. in the floor after that. I feel like we've struggled when we're on the road week one in mm-hmm. the past. So I think this could definitely be a trap game. Uh, in my opinion, I don't care if you think I'm biased or not. I think the Eagles are still winning the game, but I don't think it's going to be like a 44-3 to kind right. of game like it was last season. I think it's definitely going to be closer. We saw last year, or two years ago in 2020, we saw the – Eagles took a 17 nothing lead against the – well, they fo- they were the they football, were the football team. team at the time. Yeah, They were the football team at the time. Um, I remember Carson Wentz was going off, lighting up lighting up that uh, that football team. <laughs> that football team. I know, I, I, whatever. I'm going to call him Washington. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call them Washington. I was, they, he was lighting up that Washington defense, and then it just went to shambles. And I feel like we've seen that a lot especially on the road beginning beginning the season. So it's going to be interesting, but I'm confident in the Eagles, you know, prevailing that bad luck that we've had in recent years. Yeah. I want, I want to say that even if we do go into this game kind of overlooking it and the Lions, I mean, we 
you've seen the clips from Hard Knocks. They're fired up. Mm-hmm. They want this year to be different. Mm-hmm. I just feel like we're way more talented than them. We're, we're, I think we're too talented to lose this game. And maybe that does sound biased coming from a pair of Eagles fans, but mm-hmm. yes, that's just the way I feel. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think just in all, all positions, I think we're just better than them. Qu- quarterback, you could argue, but they have freaking Jared Goff. Tight end, maybe you could argue because Dallas Goddard, I don't think he's really come out of a shell quite yet. Because last year he dealt with Zach Ertz still being in the in the mix for half the year. Right. Um, so he'll get his chance to fully emerge this year. I think he'll become a, probably like at least I think if he's not already a top ten tight end in the league, possibly top five. Uh, I mean, I just always like Dallas. But my point is, um, the Lions just aren't that talented. Hard Knocks gives you, you know. It gives you like tunnel vision on a team. Like you only see like one view and you see like all the hard work that they put in, all the practice, but like so have the Eagles. Right. You know, the Eagles have right. kind of gone through the same motions. It's just one team has a camera on them, kind of picturing and putting together all like the cool moments. Yeah. And then you got the Eagles who have been in the same thing, and you got Howie Roseman still like being a freaking mastermind, he he just freed up like seven million dollars in in cap space the other day by manipulating was it Lane Johnson's contract or Jason Kelsey's contract? I forget who it was before, but he rearranged the contact. Yeah, I mean how he is, he's proven how smart he is. Before, if this if this all se- off season you weren't a believer, now you are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. he, he had by far the best offseason of any GM. I think that's that's pretty clear. I mean, I, I hate to beat a dead horse. We've we've done so much offseason talk. Where yeah. it's, it's this is the last time I have to say that. Hopefully. Oh my god. Yeah. No, dude. I'm so sick of like saying that. It's like every single pod episode we have about the Eagles. It's like, oh, we got to see. Uh, it's gonna be very interesting. Let's see what happens. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, finally, finally, that talk. Can come to an end on Sunday, you know, like, geez, man, I don't know, whatever. Um, but what's your pick for this game? If you're, if you're putting a bet, what bet would you put? Yeah, if, if I had to go like act, put put a little bit of money down to make like a good amount of money, I would go with that Detroit uh, halftime money line, Eagles full time money line. Ooh. I'm really just getting a feel from this game, like they're gonna like make us have to wake up in the second half yeah no i get that um i was actually gonna place a bet on the over for jalen hurts passing yards i like that it's it's definitely like hot but his his line's only like 225 so i don't i think with his weaponry and everything and the offensive line i don't know we all know the factors he's gonna come out and kind of lighten if it doesn't happen in the first half it'll happen in the second half i think at some point during that game wherever it may be he's just going to start you know like look they're going to really going to get into the motions of it yeah yeah i would i would definitely love to see that i expect that if i i know we're about to give some hot takes on the nfl in general but if i could give one hot take as an eagles fan i would rather jalen hurts light up the lions and we lose Mm-hmm. Then we win, and Jalen Hurts doesn't look improved from last year. Yeah, I feel like that it bodes better for the season if we come into this first game a little unprepared, but Jalen just looks like he took that next step. Because mm-hmm. touching on a point that I I said uh, maybe the last Eagles podcast or two ago, he's yeah. been playing a very talented defense in practice yes. all off season, mm-hmm. and now we finally get to see him go at it so, against. A less talented defense, right? Exactly. So, you know, th- is he going to look more comfortable than he did last year, just because of how mm-hmm. much, how the talent that he's been playing against in the off season? Yeah. So, um, the answer is I mean, yes. He looked good. He looked good for like the one drive that we saw him for this preseason. Right. So I don't want to read too much into that. That's why I'm looking forward yeah, to yeah. watching him this game yeah. so much. Yeah. Um. But yeah, my pick for this game, I think the Eagles win. Um, I think they get out to a really, really nice start next season, next week. Well, that might be a different story, but we'll get to that next week. Mm-hmm. We'll be talking about that. By the way, uh, schedule change. Um, before we get into our picks for this week in the NFL and our, some of our uh, upsets and hot takes and everything, 
Um, just want to make the executive amount announcement, I guess you want to call it that, um, mm-hmm. that we're going to be coming back with Eagles related content every single week. NFL season's back. Um, we're going to be recapping the Eagles game um, on Mondays. We're looking to get get episodes out to you guys on Tuesdays and then maybe do an Eagles preview towards the end of the week. Again, we'll figure out everything, and um, you guys will be following the channel, so um, you'll see. But and there'll still be some Sixers we'll content stuck in there, too. Oh, yeah. So one, Eagles, Once again, the Sixers season, we'll probably be doing one Sixers and one Eagles episode a week just to yep. just because both seasons will be in full swing. Yeah. But right now, it's still NBA offseason, so we're talking about yeah. more. Yeah, and one more thing before we get into our takes, by the way. Check out my check out my T-shirt, dog. Hey. Yeah, got the big dig. Dude, I've had, I've had this shirt since – Right after the Super Bowl, I literally ordered this like three weeks after the Super Bowl. You should get like a order like a separate Super Bowl LL or LI eye patch on the back or not yeah. on the back, and then kind of yeah. put that on the front yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, I could probably sew it on. My buddy, he does like uh, he actually sews and like he puts patches onto his Converse and stuff. Hmm. Pretty sick, but yeah. But it, going into our our picks, let's do our picks first. We have some hot takes as well. Um, but Asher, who's your lock? for this this upcoming week my lock is the monday night game i have the broncos over the seahawks i mean i don't i don't want to reiterate too much from our lengthy uh, nfl preview and then we've done the offseason previews you know we've talked about the other teams at mm-hmm. length so right but i just that broncos defense is really good the seahawks mm-hmm. are starting geno smith that does not bode well for them i don't really care that it's in seattle you know Ro- not that Russ, I don't think Russell Wilson really is going to come in with a vengeance. I don't really think he hates the Seahawks. No, but I don't think so. It's, I mean, he's still a much more talented quarterback than Geno Smith. <laughs> right. Yeah. So my lock is going to be the 49ers over the Chicago Bears. Mm. There's really not much to be said. The Bears are one of the worst teams in the league. Um, I think if it were really any team outside of the Bears, I would still take it a lock. Um, that's how confident I am that the Bears are going to be abysmal this year. I'm talking two wins, maybe three wins. Um, Niners, as we know, big question mark in Trey, uh, in Trey Lance. But the rest of the roster has taken them to an NFC Championship game the last two years. I don't expect that to really change. I think it's very, very strong all around outside of the quarterback position. Mm-hmm. But, what? I mean, even then, it's they're, e- they're going to easily beat the Bears. I don't, I don't really see that being an upset. Got a got a toss up pick for this week as well. So my toss up. Originally thought about this being an upset, but you can make an argument for both sides. I had the Vikings being the Packers on Sunday on Sunday afternoon. Um, I don't believe in the Packers quite yet. Um, I, I honestly can't really name the wide receiver one for the Packers off the top of my head. Actually, you probably know better than me, but I believe Alan Lazard is actually out on sunday yeah. so so that that just adds my my argument easier, kind yeah. of um i think the vikings are going to beat the packers i don't really see the packers as being this god tier team i think yeah. they kind of went through the last straw last off last season in the playoffs you know this is kind of an all or nothing year in my opinion for the packers otherwise like the it's like the sixers except in, in football and <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, the tension between that front office and Rodgers just keeps growing yeah. every yeah. season that they're not really putting the talent around him to win. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yeah, so and, I, I and, 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 uh, and Aaron Rodgers is probably going to be doing, like, crack cocaine or LSD or something. Right, like right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it Pat- depends on whether or not Aaron Rodgers is going to take DMT before this game, before yeah, I can make yeah, my pick. Yeah, it's all it depends on, like, is he going to do drugs? Is he going to do psychedelics? Yeah. I mean, if not, I'm leaning Vikings, but maybe – Yeah. Yeah, who knows? But I actually – my, my toss-up pick is the same as you this week. We're on the same page. I um, know with the offseason previews, you have the Vikings actually winning the North. Mm-hmm. So taking the Vikings over the Packers probably seems like a little less of an upset to you. Mm-hmm. For me, I do have the Packers staying on top of the North, but this game, it's in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rodgers just lost to Vontae Adams. Kirk Cousins keeps his uh, wide receiver core, so a little more uh, chemistry there remains. I think the Packers are going to turn on towards the end of the season as Rodgers gets more comfortable with the new guys that he's throwing to. But, I I mean, th- this game, I just feel like 
there's going to be a lot of miscommunications and I'm, I'm going to take Minnesota as well. Yeah. Um, now my upset for the week, this, this was tough. It was hard for me to look at all the games and be like, damn, like I really feel confident in this upset pick, but this one, this one just kind of looked out at me giants over Titans. Ooh. I have the New York giants beating the, the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. The reason why I say that is because the Titans, I think the, the, the rush defense of the New York giants is going to improve. Obviously Kayvon Thibodeau being there mm-hmm. um, really, really improves that. But the Titans with Derrick Henry, it's kind of like, it's kind of a toss up, but if I were to say any game we're beating upset, I think it's the giants, Denny Jones, a lot of people hate on him, but I think he glows. He showed like glimpses of kind of really, really good quarterback play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he gets one of those. He cut, he catches lightning in a bottle for this game and kind of goes off against now kind of like a mediocre Titans, Titans team that really doesn't have anything going on outside of Derrick Henry. They have Traylon Burks, you know, coming in first round pick, but nonetheless, I think the Giants. I think Danny Jones leads the Giants to a win over the Tennessee Titans. All right, yeah, that's that's respectable. You have to remember as well that. Saquon Barkley is in full health now. Yeah. And Saquon Barkley in full health is something that we probably haven't seen in a year and a half. Yes. But I think people forget how good he is when he's at like at full power. Yeah, <laughs> the only question is, is he going to look the same? Is he going to look the same? That's that's well, another question. I have him in both my fantasy leagues, so I sure hope so. <laughs> I'm betting on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he is going to look the same. I, I have the Titans by a hair, but I can definitely mm-hmm. see. That uh, it's gonna it is gonna take a Daniel Jones uh, career game probably. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. But I think I think Danny Jones kind of catches lightning in a bottle there. Um, what's your upset? I've got a I've got a big upset and I've got a small upset for you. Oh, okay, okay. I'll go, I'll go with my big one first because I've got a hot take attached to the small upset. So I got the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers over the Cincinnati Bengals this week. That's respectable. That's respectable, honestly. We just saw a Super Bowl hangover from the Los Angeles Rams. Similar thing going on with the Bengals, you think? Similar thing could go on with the Bengals, definitely. I know that offensive line improved, but I mean they have TJ Watt on the other side. So if they're mm-hmm. you know, if there's one real strength of the, the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's that rush defense. Yeah. I think they've led the league in sacks in two or three consecutive years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they've been that defense is good on the Steelers. But um, when you're done, I have a hot take that has to do with that game as well. I don't know if you have one, but I have a hot take. That that the only hot take I have for that game is that the Steelers are going to win. But I'd like to hear you have too. Okay, so my hot take: George Pickens has two receiving touchdowns for over 150 yards. All right, that is a hot take. Yeah, I think I'm after what I've seen from George Pickens. Um, Mitch Trubisky throwing to him is going to be questionable but i think george pickens is i'm that big of a believer in george pickens i think he's a dog an absolute dog a bulldog a georgia bulldog that's gonna be a dog in the nfl i think he's gonna be really good i really like george pickens i yeah i don't want to discount mitch trubisky either he he did lead a lead a team to the playoffs just a few years ago Mm -hmm. you know i think that the strength of that Bears team was that defense. I think the Steelers have a similar thing going on. And mm-hmm. he's probably got a better receiving core over here in Pittsburgh than he did in Chicago. Uh, than he ever did. I think yeah. his top of the was Allen. Did he have Allen Robinson? Yeah, Allen Robinson and, and not yeah. much else. But, you know, there's there's yeah. Pickens, there's Deontay Johnson in, in Pittsburgh, there's Ch- Chase Claypool. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's got a lot of guys to go to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, is that is that do for you as far as your pick? I, I got one more. Well, what's your small upset, dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have I've I've talked up the New England Patriots all off season. Yeah. I said I have them getting like 11, 12 wins, getting that first wild card spot in the playoffs. I have them creaming the Miami Dolphins this week. Really? I believe they're three and a half point underdogs, but it's yeah. a very young coach. Their coach is in his mid thirties. It's his. This is his first game as an NFL head coach. There's no guy. You, there's no guy that you would want to go against less in your first game than Bill Belichick. Yeah. In a meeting of the minds. Yep. You know, I think Bill, Bill Belichick has a great record against rookie head coaches, rookie quarterbacks. You know, any any inexperienced guys, he he, he just kind of 
knows what they're thinking. He knows where they're going to go. He's always one or two steps ahead. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, that, that Miami offense is going to come into itself. Mike McDaniel has a lot of, uh, Mike McDaniels has a lot of, a lot of uh, chess pieces to play with on that offense. I don't think he's going to have it all figured out week one. And this New England Patriots team stayed pretty stagnant as far as the roster goes. So I think Belichick really knows what he's working with. This team did just go to the playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think they take advantage of Miami's inexperience and, uh, you know, just inexperience in playing with each other. Mm-hmm. So I have them holding the Dolphins to under 10 points. I think we see a similar game from the Dolphins as we did just like, <laughs> from the Rams versus the Bills. So Interesting. Okay. Yeah. that That's a valid take. Um, statistically, uh, Bill Belichick has been really good against rookie head coaches. Right. So. Makes sense. Um, so for me, for my hot takes, I already told you, George Pickens, two touchdowns for 150-plus yards. Now, Monday night, Broncos, Seahawks. I had the Broncos shutting out the Seattle Seahawks on Monday night football, and I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be like 28 to nothing, 31 to nothing. I think that that offense with Russell Wilson, I think he's going to plug right in and he's going to do really well. He's got really nice options and Cortland, Cortland Sutton. I have Cortland Sutton on my fantasy team. I'm really hoping Russ kind of leads towards him as his number one wide receiver um, outside of Jerry Judy. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, like you've said many times, the Broncos have an insane, a pretty good, pretty damn good defense. And I, yeah. I don't see that Seahawks offense – Really having any luck. I don't really see any bright spots outside of uh, DK Metcalf. Outside of that, it's kind of like a whole bunch of bleh. And you got who, who, who's they have an aging ball? Tyler Lockett. Yeah, aging Tyler Lockett. Who's, who's, fan who's not really proven himself yet. Yeah, but so, overall, nothing impressive. But that Seahawks offense, I, I don't really think they they put up anything. Like literally, they don't put any, up anything. Yeah. Uh, Asher, what are your one of your hot you have any hot takes for us? Anybody? Yeah, so my last one, uh, the the Carolina Browns game, Ooh. the line on that right now is 0. 0.5 in – I don't remember which team's favorite. It doesn't really matter. Basically, Vegas doesn't know what to do with that game. Yeah. What? Like, essentially predicting a tie almost. Yep. <laughs> so I have Baker Mayfield, you know, he, he – he said multiple times how much he wants to beat that Cleveland team in week one. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to be a little overzealous. He is a bit of a gunslinger. Mm-hmm. I have him throwing three picks. Wow. The take the game. I'm sorry? The Panthers take the win, though. So oh, a little okay. bit of a parlay there for you. Oh, okay. I think he does just enough to beat his uh, his old team, but he is going to – Gonna make some mistakes like along the way. I feel like you're un- well, you're not undermining that Browns defense because you have them getting three picks, but at the same time, I, I'm I may be underselling the Browns offense. I just I don't think they're gonna Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett hasn't even been taking snaps with the first team because yeah. they've had Deshaun Watson playing and now he's suspended eleven games. So Yep. I don't think they're gonna get much uh, yeah. much traction. I think, I think that's valid. Um Baker Mayfield, I think, is gonna be a bit sharper than throwing th- three picks. Honestly, he's not Jameis Winston out here, so I don't I don't really see that quite. I, I can see him throwing one, maybe two, but I don't think he's going to have the most impressive game. I love Baker, but I think it's going to take him a little bit of time to kind of fit in that scheme. I don't know if he yeah. really fits. I don't know if he really fits there. If I'm being honest with you, he's got DJ Moore to throw to, and that's about it. As opposed to in Cleveland, I think he had a lot more to grow to. I mean, he actually had a tight end, David Njoku. Um, I don't think yeah. they really have much of anything going on in Carolina. It, it's difficult enough for a quarterback to fit in a whole new system, yeah. and he was traded late in the offseason, you know, let alone when that offense just doesn't have that many pieces. Yeah, I mean, you know, Christian McCaffrey is one of the best weapons in the NFL. Mm-hmm. DJ Moore is a great receiver. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, like, not a, lot of, not a lot of guys to go to. Yeah, exactly. But we'll see. I'm excited for that game. I say yeah. we'll see a lot on this freaking podcast. I just realized that. Say well, we'll see a lot, but it's yeah, like we've basically been like, previewing since the first episode. So. Well, yeah, that's all we've been doing. That's uh, yeah, whatever. But we're finally I here. We'll my some final, we have scenes. Yeah, my final, my final hot take is I think, I mean, we all know that I'm a huge, huge Vikings fan this year, and this go kind of you know emphasizes that. I had the Vikings being the Packers by 21, being the Packers by 21, 
and Kirk Cousins passes for 400 yards and three touchdowns. I think okay. Jefferson scores two. Interesting. I can, I can see that. I think I think this game is a little too high stakes for Kirk to have a really good game. It's also prime time, so yeah, I mean, it's not prime time. It, it, it's it, not, it, yeah, it, that four o'clock game. Yeah, but, but I think Kirk's really like a one o'clock game versus like a like a seven and ten team kind of guy where he goes off. <laughs> yeah, but I like to believe in Kirk Cousins. All right, I okay. I love Kirk Cousins. Um, I like that. Yeah, I, he 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 gets too much slander for sure. I yeah, think it's slandering him, but <laughs> it's so annoying that people want to call him like not a top fifteen, not a top ten quarterback. Yeah. I think he's a top ten quarterback. Have you not seen his stats? No, no. yeah, he he was thirty three touchdowns, seven seven picks last year. It's yeah, like, I mean that's Carson Wentz MVP numbers. Yeah, that's Carson Wentz MVP numbers, and we don't want to get we, we don't want to put the respect on Kirk Cousins' names because he hasn't performed the best in prime time. I don't right. know. I think that changes this year. I think he has everything going for him. I think this is the Vikings' year to kind of put a stamp on that NFC North, kind of kiss the Packers goodbye, at least for this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I, I can go on and on about how big a fan I am of the Vikings. <laughs> like next week, I don't even know if the Eagles will beat the Vikings. I think I don't. I don't know if that's going to happen. But right. we'll, we'll talk we'll about that next week. Next week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll cool. talk about that next, next week. Um, but yeah. Um, Asher, do you have any final thoughts on this week for NFL football? Or are you just like waiting? Go to- birds. Go birds. That's right. That's right. Let's fucking go birds. Yep. Um, but that'll wrap us up for this episode of two and five scoop. We'll be back to you early next week. Trying to, uh, probably going to overview the Eagles, you know, what goes on in that game, what went wrong, what went right. Hopefully it's more right than wrong. Um, We'll touch on the Sixers next week. We got some news with a recent signing. Um, we'll talk about that in full depth next week. But as always, um, hit the subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Um, down below our faces, we have all of our social media on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok. Um, some more content being pumped out of TikTok by myself. Um, but thank you for listening. And you guys have a great weekend. See you.